Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to Beepow Picks, all part of the Pearl of Wisdom brand. And uh, I, I've had so many letters. Oh, Guido has brought letters from the letter uh, room. You know, he brings up the sack of letters and he pours it all over the letter table. We all frolic. And uh, asking me to bring back my game by game breakdown and sides and picks. I'll even give, possibly give you a score for each game. I haven't been doing it because now I'm doing it professionally. So I had to kind of work out a way that I'm not giving you picks that are being paid for by people with their hard-earned money, and I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the picks. I'm not necessarily giving all these picks to my clients. You might want to go over to uh, my TikTok also at Perlo Wisdom. Let me see. Actually, what is it called? BPOW Picks, B-P-O-W Picks. And there I show you what my record was from the night before and all kinds of more stuff that you can be part of. But if you would like all my picks, my for sure, for sure picks that are up 26 units already this NHL hockey season, and this is for October 28th, by the way, hit me. I'm going to put the link in the comment section. Okay. Hit it. There's a thing there where you can get a free week and you can watch and see for yourself how the frolic unveils. All right, let's get to it because this is going to take a while. Make sure you got yourself a nice, cool drink because these take a while. All right, next. Okay, let's go to, uh, look, I'm, I'm actually feeling a little nervous I haven't did this so long. <laughs> there we go. Here's the games. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to look at each team. We're going to look at uh, who the goaltender may be kind of where they've been, uh, how they are doing uh, sort of record-wise, and uh, what I think is going to happen in each game. First, we look at the Anaheim Ducks and the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, I, Odd Shark, I find it interesting what they do. They almost have it as a draw. Um, Anaheim is 1-5-1. One, the Golden Knights are 6-2-0. and oh. uh, I like this because they give you a couple of things here. Anaheim has, has been, is 0-6 straight up. They've been doing horrible. Uh, Vegas are 10-4 and four at home. 9-1 and one straight up in their last 10 games played against Anaheim. 9-1. and one. And uh, I like the way I look at their lineups as well. I like the way Foot Cassidy is, that's the coach of the Vegas Golden Knights. He's, he started jumbling up the lines a little bit, but has kind of brought it back to what, to what it was last year with Stevenson, Eichel, and Stone. And the, uh, the what do they call that line, the Smith, Carlson, Marshall Soul line? Comment in the comment section, remind me, I can't remember. Misfit line, I believe it is. And uh, then Brett. Howden, Roy, and adding some offense there for Kessel so he doesn't have to uh, be up against the other team's top players, but he can still use that killer passing and shot. And they are, have some underrated uh, offense there on their third line. So I like the way they, they have done that. I like the spot here for Vegas. And Anaheim... I mean, this team is so nondescript ever since Getzloff left. They brought in some guys like Ryan Strom and Frank Vetrano, uh, sort of veterans, I suppose, but neither one of them are known for like their leadership, and certainly not John Klingberg. I think they have too many of the same type of player on defense. Uh, they There's not really a two-way kind of, you know, guys that will be two-way down the road, but nobody here that, like, just knocks you out of the park as a two-way forward at all. They they really have no identity still up until now. And I, I just can't take them here. I can't take them here. Vegas is also, this is another thing I like to look at, uh, 
daily face-off on, on what they've done recently. Vegas has had a couple days off since they played in San Jose. They're playing Winnipeg after this. I suppose it's a little bit of an overlooked spot. What I mean by that is you've got a big na- game coming up uh, against the Jets, who are much better, are better than Anaheim. And they could be a little bit not paying attention here at Anaheim. That's about the best I can come up with for them to lose this game. Um, Anaheim, on the other hand, I believe this is their first game. Oh, this is this is a road game sandwiched in between a home game. That's never fun. You got to go home. I know it's not far. It's just to Vegas, but you still got to travel. Go to Vegas knowing that you got to go and play Toronto after this. Bad spot. I'm going with. Uh, I I I don't know if I'm going to. I probably I'm probably giving you a free pick here. I got. I got to get. I mean, it's quite obvious what I'm doing here. I'm taking Vegas. Um, as far as the over under is concerned, I'm kind of leaning the under here. Um, Gibson has been much better as of late. He's been playing a lot better as of late. He should be in net here. Thompson has been playing very well. I think Vegas could be a little slow leg to start off with. It's hard to get up for this game. However, it is a division rival. So, um, and it's a crosstown division rival. So Anaheim will be given everything they've got. I just think it could be tight. And this could be an under. I'm not sure I'll be giving that pick to my clients or not, but that's what I would say. All right. Next, Islanders versus Carolina. And I forgot to put it up here, but so I'm going to just talk about it first. Um, Carolina had just came back from a five-game Eastern road trip. The Islanders just took a win from the New York Rangers that they didn't deserve to win. Now, the Islanders pop gun really have a pop gun offense right now, and it's not looking like it's going to get any better soon. I watched that game with the Rangers. There's just no creativity in this lineup at all. It's been the problem for a long time, and I don't see that changing now. The Islanders are 1-10 in 10 straight up in their last 11 games in Carolina. Okay, Carolina won a five-game road trip. They've been back for three days. It's about a four-hour, it's about a two-time two zone change for them coming back. It is, it's, it's basically been said that when you're talking about time zone changes, it takes a day for every hour of time zone change for a body to get back into the groove again. It's been three days. Carolina is a killer home team, um, 10 and one in their last 11 games at home. That would include in the playoffs this year. So with Sorokin in net and Anderson should also be in net. Let's look at our left wing lock. I like to look at that. It's my, it's my favorite app for, for this. Um, yeah, Anderson is in net and Sorokin is in net. I got to go with the Hurricanes here. I'm not going to go into their lineups. Nothing has really changed with them. Uh, so I'm not going to go into their lineups. I like Frederick I, I like Frederick Anderson in Carolina here. I guess you're going to have to throw it up in regulation right now. And I might put a pick in for the under here, although I believe it's dropped to five and a half. Um, so I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to go the under here or not. Carolina. Okay, you can still find a six out there. I'd probably lean the under. Carolina is such a good defensive team. These are two really good goaltenders. Um, the Islanders against the Rangers were able to shut them down not too bad. Um, they're still pretty decent defensively, but Sorokin is just simply a beast. He's a Vesna Trophy winner. That's their goaltender, Sorokin. So. Probably go the under here. Probably go Carolina. Uh, it's paying minus 187. I mean, I don't really like that much, so we'll probably have to go in regulation if we're going to do it. Come over to bpalpicks.com so you can see if I throw this in or not. Things change. This is my early leans. So things change over the 
injuries come in, all of that stuff like that. I always keep my friends that are helping uh, notified on any changes that come up. So uh, Boston versus Columbus. And this is an interesting one. I guess the first thing we need to look at here with Boston is this is three games and four nights for them. And that's never – it's early in the season, so it doesn't worry me all that much. They didn't have an incredibly uh, difficult game against Detroit last night. So their legs should be pretty good. Marshawn looked pretty good already, even though he hadn't played in a long time. Back in the lineup tonight. I, actually, I think, now that I remember correctly, they're going to rest him in the back-to-back. -back. Yeah, he's not going to be in tonight. And it's possible that David Krejci might not be in either. So three games in four nights. They are going to be putting uh, Allmark in, who has been solid. And Columbus is coming off, I believe, two losses that were not very nice. Like, one of them they collapsed against Pittsburgh, and then they lost against Arizona. I might take a shot at Columbus here. The only problem here, and this is Columbus here, is that their defense is not looking good. What do they have? Jake Bean is injured? Illness. Day to day. And Blankenberg is out. So they've got that uh, rookie that they brought up, David Juracek, and Gavin Bayruther, who never is, seems to be able to hold up in the lineup. I may not put anything on here. I don't know. But if I was going to, I would probably lean Columbus. You got Lion A back. He already had, he got a game, two games, or game under after his injury, under his belt. Should get his legs moving a little more. Um, Kent Johnson, Nyquist. I mean, this lineup isn't spectacular, and I don't really trust Columbus. But if I'm going to put anything on here, I've been burnt so many times taking teams three games in four nights that I may just do that here. And I I don't know. I got a gut feeling. I just have a gut feeling that this is going to go under. Sometimes you just go on your gut, right? Uh, sometimes that's the best thing to do is go on your gut. And let's see some trends here. Yeah, see, the trends are Boston. Six and two straight up in the last eight games against Columbus. Uh, the under has, see, look at this, maybe part of my gut. The under has come in five out of six times against Columbus. I like the under. Um, I, I, I don't think Columbus is going to be able, uh, Columbus is going to have a hard time against Dahlmark. Anybody is right now, the way he's playing. I don't think Boston's going to want to run and gun with Columbus. If, if they got, if they're going to win this game with a little bit of tired legs, they got to shut them down. So, um, the hard part I have with that is Columbus has a tendency to have bad defensive breakdowns, and Boston then could end up winning this game even though they have twenty one, twenty two shots. Not to mention that. Not to mention that Merz Lickens is not having the greatest outing this year so far. 4.06, my gosh. Uh, but I, I have a feeling this will be close. I wouldn't even mind think. I wouldn't even, uh, I'd maybe even think of sprinkling a little bit on the draw here. I kind of like the draw. So that's my pick for there. Just a couple of picks for there. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to give these to my clients or anything like that. Some of them I will, some of them I won't. You can find out for yourself by getting a free week, free week by hitting the link in the bio, signing yourself up. You get a free week. You can check it out for yourself, right? You can get all these picks when they're ready every day. Uh, Colorado versus New Jersey. And here's one where... Um, Colorado, we'll get into this for a second. Uh, see, they're 5-1 they're straight up in their last six games against New Jersey. 
and they're 12 and 2 in their last 14 games on the road. Man, it's hard to go against them. It really is. Um, just coming off that win against the Rangers, I feel like this could be a little bit of a letdown spot for Colorado, though. Um, I like to look at records sometimes, too. See, New Jersey Devils are 4 3 0, and Colorado is 4 2 1. Uh, they New Jersey had a big win against Detroit. I think their confidence should be up here after they had a wasn't it a bad loss against Arizona or something like that? No, Washington. They let it all fall apart in Washington. They came back and played very well. There's a few things about this game, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, seriously, you're not on Colorado? Well, I'll tell you. They have, okay, Landeskog is out. Helm is out. Valerie Nachushkin is out. And I do not, like, he's got 12 points already in seven games played. People laughed when they gave him that contract. I, I was like, what are you talking about? He is a beast, man. At $6 million, I said when they gave him that contract, I said, that's money. That's like freaking, uh, I'd pay that easy for him. It's really good. So, you got Martin Cote up with Newhook and Rodriguez. Yeah, I love their top line. McKinnon, Ranton, and Alekinen. And I love their defense, especially with Taves in there. This team isn't the same without Taves in the, in the lineup. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and that alone could probably win it. But they're putting Pavel Franco in. And he's been brutal. Uh, so it's a mishmash here. You got Newhook, Rodriguez, and a new line mate in Cote. That what doesn't work well for chemistry when you got a new guy in there, especially a guy that you don't often play with at all. And Martin Cote hasn't been able to put up a point in the NHL. He hasn't been able to get his footing in the NHL at all. Then you got Cagliani, Comper, O'Connor. That's a solid line. But, and uh, Mikel, it's not bad. They're top, it's okay. But it's not like Colorado okay here. It's not spectacular. Um, as we've seen with Colorado. And what do they play after this by chance? They play the Islanders after this. Now, the Islanders are not a very good team. But here's the thing. Most perception, players' perception usually goes on not just recent history, but overall history. New Jersey Devils have been a bad team for a while. Most players think of that subconsciously, I would say, as that. I They would think the Islanders are a team that has made the you know semifinals twice in the past four years. Overall, I think they would think that uh, Colorado would take the Islanders to be a team that they're really looking to beat here. And that, mean, that kind of says a lot that they put Francois in that here instead of the second of the back-to-back. -back where they're going to play Gorgiev against the Islanders. And uh, New Jersey, they're going to put... So I could see an overlooked spot here for New Jersey. I almost want to sprinkle some on New Jersey. I'm not sure I'm going to be in on Colorado here. As far as the over-under is concerned, these are two over teams. With Francois in net, and we'll look at New Jersey's lineup here. See, New Jersey has its own issues too. Uh, Palat is out. So now they've had to move their stuff around. Their line lines around. Tatar goes up on the top line with Heischer and Fabian Zuderlin. And then Halla, Hughes, and Bratt. But their depth, Sharon Govich, Mercer, Boquist, Woods, McLeod, Bash. I like, I actually like New Jersey's forward depth better than Colorado's here right now in this spot. But as far as the total is concerned, here's something that happens a lot. When a team has had an injury, had some injuries, and they got to mix up their lines, what ha often happens is a coach will say, I want you to shoot a lot tonight. I don't want you playing around with the puck because you're not used to each other. And I think both teams will shoot a lot. With Merzlikens not being totally on his game and uh, – uh, Franco certainly isn't either. I would probably go the over on this game, even though they have some guys that are out. Because lot, if a, lots of 
the uh, what uh, two goaltenders are struggling don't want, or what I want to see is lots of shots on them, right? Because they're struggling. So I would say probably the over here. Next game. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Vancouver. And Vancouver coming off a win. This is on a back-to-back -back now. Uh, over Seattle. The first win of the year against Seattle. And uh, Pittsburgh has had some time off. This is They're in the Western road trip right now. But they, they should be fairly rested, even though it is, if I remember correctly here. Let me get it straight. Yeah, two days off since they played Calgary. Here's the thing. They also lost their last two games against the Oilers and Calgary. I think they really, they're really they going to really want this game. Uh, Vancouver's going to be thinking high on themselves a little bit, like feeling a little better about themselves and probably come into this game feeling, I don't know if they feel like they can take on the world, but kind of like, whew, we got that over with. We, we got our first win. So now that's when you look at the storyline there, let's look at the lineup and see what's going on. Here's the bad part. Jake Gunsel and Jason Zucker are not are injured. But there is no team in the NHL that is better at the next man up, as they call it where the whoever comes in to play plays amazing, plays really well. Like, I don't think there's any team in the NHL that handles injuries better than the Pittsburgh Penguins. It's almost like it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'm more concerned about, with when it comes to Pittsburgh, how much they want the game. And I think they really want the game. Bad part, though, Casey DeSmith is in, probably going to be in that. Jari played last night. Or, sorry, Jari. Uh, they Because uh, aren't they? Yeah, they're sorry. I better look. They're on a back-to-back. -back, that's why. This is the front part of a back-to-back, -back, I believe. Yes, yeah, Seattle. Now, it isn't an overlook game because Seattle is not a big team coming up to Vancouver. So, um, also... They want to make sure they get at least one of these wins on the road. They don't want to go home with no wins on a road trip. And this one, so I think they'll probably put Jari in here against the backup. Maybe they put to Smith because Vancouver will be using their backup after using Demko last night. And Seattle doesn't really have a very good goaltender in Jones. But I, I my lean is... Hmm, My lean is that they're going to put Jari in here. It's tough to say. Either way, if the Smith goes in, in against Vancouver, I still like Pittsburgh. I'm not sure I would do it in regulation, though, because I, I just think Vancouver is going to be on a little bit of a high. They're going to be up for Pittsburgh. They've circled this on their calendar. This is Pittsburgh. This is Crosby. Everybody loves to play Pittsburgh. Everybody wants to, everybody gets up for Pittsburgh. Um, however, like it has happened all year, this defense will probably break down. Larson, Myers, Rathbone, Burroughs, Breeze, Wash, and that is a terrible, terrible defense. Absolutely ter terrible. Uh, Mart Spencer Martin will be in. He looked pretty good last year. He didn't fare well in his first outing. And I'm going to lean with this defense. He's probably not going to fare well tonight. So I'm going to take Pittsburgh. Not sure I'll do it in regulation. I'll probably take Pittsburgh. And I'm leaning to the over six and a half in here as well, simply because the Smith is in. Uh, the only way it would go under six and a half is if Pittsburgh decides to try to shut them down rather, you know, and play like a very, very defensive game, which is possible. Because the only way that they could probably lose against Vancouver is if they went back and forth against them. Personally, I just don't think, I think Pittsburgh thinks they can own Vancouver here. Let's see if there's any trends. Is there, especially if there is a trend 
for Pittsburgh against Vancouver. Four and one in their last five games. Yeah, I'll, I'll go for Pittsburgh here. Bad thing is they're one and six straight up on the road. Now you can say, well, see, they're not very good on the road right now. That was including the playoffs. And that's just something that teams like Pittsburgh want to write that ship. So even more so here. I think they'll try to win this game quite a bit. And Pittsburgh will take it down. Also leaning the over in that game. Uh, finally, the last game we have on the card is Arizona versus Winnipeg. And Arizona is having their first game in their new digs. And, you know, I, I if I'm going to play on this, uh, without going through, oh, is it, is it their first back game back from a road trip too, though, isn't it? That's the bad part. A long road trip too. How much time have they had off? Two days. I'm not liking this game. Um, there are I have a few picks that are not side in totals that I'm probably going to put in. Get yourself, hit the link, get yourself in. Okay. Today. Get your one week free. If you don't care about your one week free, we got, if you just want it, we got a three day package, one week package, one day package. Because I really like this one pick that I got. And I definitely will be giving to my clients, but it's not a side or total. Um, even though they came off of a road trip, I think Arizona will be gunning at least in the first period here for sure. Winnipeg is coming off a big win against LA, and then they got to come again, come come to Arizona in this dingy building and play against Arizona. This could be a letdown spot for Winnipeg. Not to mention they're playing Riddich, the sieve, big sieve, Riddich. He's a terrible goaltender. I mean, for NHL, on, on an NHL level, that is. Um, now, I do, I'm just trying to think, see here where, how long Winnipeg has been on the road. They haven't been on the road much. It was at home, go to LA. It is a back to back, but I don't think it's a back to back that's going to hurt them too bad. They were rested up into this game. So I think they could have some jump. Um, they are 4-3 and 0-2 as well, which is, you know, sort of a winning record. But if I'm going to do anything with this game as far as side and total is concerned, oh, you're only getting 137 for Arizona. I kind of throw something on Arizona here. Um, with Riddich and Net, they've been meshing a lot better ever since. Uh, and this happened last year, too, with Arizona. They started off rough. You have uh, Turney, who's, who seems to be a fantastic coach, has them now playing as a team and playing tough, playing hard. They, 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 they skated circles around Columbus. Winnipeg could be a little tired here. And I would probably go over six and a half for the total as well. I think Arizona has played over Almost the whole road trip was over for them. I think you'll see it in the trends here. When a four and one, okay, so Winnipeg does have a four and one straight up record in the last five games against Arizona. Something to watch. That's why I wouldn't put much on it. I just, I got a feeling with Rich and Net that Arizona's got a shot here, and I'd rather take the plus money. Uh, Total has gone over in eight of Arizona's last eight games against the Western Conference. Uh, five in the last five games, over in nine of the last ten games. Right? It's going to be electric, as it can be, with 5,000 people in the stands. Uh, but it will be. It'll be loud. It'll be going. And Rich is in net, so Arizona should be able to pot a couple. I got a couple plays on here now that I'm talking it through. That you might be interested in. I would go check it out, my friends. Go check out pearlofwisdom.com. But those are my early leans. I uh, hope that helps you with your picks. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about the picks I made, 
what picks you're making and why, all of that stuff. That's my favorite part in the land. I love finding out what everybody's doing. Come over to Beepal Picks. I'm going to give you a little Prilla dance out here. Now, I'll try to do this a couple times a week if I got time or whatever. Maybe I'll do it five days a week if you guys are really enjoying it. Have a great day, everybody. That's my full 42.